breaking some mighty big news. A field correspondent brings banner headlines in Cincinnati by doubling as managing editor. A Boston photographer captures Minnesota beating a tight deadline for the front page. A bold type in Baltimore reaches for a long section and resets his fine print. Dateline Cleveland, where the feature in this pullout is that nobody is stopping the presses. Extra, extra, this supplement includes a special edition for the funny pages. A cub reporter answers a want ad and gets the job done on assignment. So hear all about it, y'all, on This Week in Baseball. Two words said it all. Pete Rose returned to the Reds as player manager after five and a half years in Philadelphia and Montreal. He was greeted with a hero's welcome from his hometown, where he spent 16 years as one of the main cogs in a big red machine that dominated the majors in the mid-70s. The players were just as pleased as the fans. He was my idol when I was a kid. He's my idol now, and he always will be my idol. I just... I just like the way he played the game. He gave 110 percent. He, he he busted his tail every day, and it, it doesn't take any ability to hustle. And, and that's what he did every day, day in and day out. And I think that's what he demands from his players. I think it's one of the best moves uh, Cincinnati Reds have been making, uh, especially this year. So, so, you know, we got a rough time. They rooted for Pete. They were waiting to see Pete play, and I never see that this happen this year. Here. I was a Reds fan when I was a kid, and I'll be a Reds fan when when uh, when I'm an old man. And. Uh, it's just something that's in your blood, and I think there's many, many people in this town uh, that feel the same way about the Reds uh, that I do. In his first at bat, Rose wrapped out a run-scoring single against Chicago, and a misplay allowed him to display the fire that continues to flash at 43 years of age. Pete won his first game as manager. And although the Cubs came back to win the next two, Rose still sizzled, going 8 for 15 in the series with five RBIs. You know, it would be only fitting if he broke Ty Cobb's all-time hit mark in a Cincinnati uniform. Welcome home, Pete. The Houston Astros were all aglow after picking up nine straight wins including a three-game sweep that left Pittsburgh hanging out to dry. Enos Cabell hit 462 in the series and raised his average near 300. Rookie Jim Pankovich provided the difference in game one, stroking a two-run single in the 10th inning for his first game winner. Dolly got the win in relief to go eight and four, and he also picked up a save in the finale. For the Pirates, game two looked a lot like game one. Bill Doran had Houston humming right off the bat with a leadoff triple. Doran's 14-game hitting streak ended in the opener, but he went four for nine in the next two games. Overall, the Astros assaulted Pirate pitching with 34 hits in the series. Lacoste locked up the win in game two with seven innings of shutout ball for a seven and three mark. Houston happiness in game three came courtesy of Joe Necro, who won his 10th game in his last 12 decisions for a 12 and nine mark. Phil Garner got the game winner with an eighth inning home run and the Astros rolled into third place in the West. It took the Chicago Cubs to stop the Astros' streak and set off on a four-game run of their own. Steve Trout tossed a complete game to go 11-5, and, 
thanks in part to three double plays. Keith Moreland got his sixth game-winning hit in two weeks, going two for four with three RBIs. Ron Say also drove in three with his 21st home run of the year. That gave the Penguins three homers in three games and eight in 21 games. Cincinnati felt Chicago's heat too when the Cubs really teed off. Thad Bosley was sent up to pinch hit with the score tied and he soon silenced Fred's rooters with a three-run homer to win the ball game. George Frazier fired five innings of shutout ball in relief to earn the victory for a four and two mark since joining the Cub Club. Rick Sutcliffe just kept on sailing, winning number nine in a row with eight strikeouts to go 11 and one for Chicago. Cub bats kept on exploding. 39 runs on 46 hits in the four wins. Yes, the Cubs appear to be pulling out in the east, and they might be difficult to catch. The Montreal Expos pulled out on a West Coast road trip and got their act in gear with a six-game winning streak. Andre Dawson was dynamite with back-to-back -back game winners and home runs in three straight games. The Hawk hit better than 350 during the streak, including five runs scored and five batted in. Charlie Lee lasted eight innings against San Francisco and improved his record to 15 and eight. Giant fans couldn't bear to watch the defensive play of center fielder Tim Raines. Hang in there, Rock. Hat away, boy. Reigns also shined at the plate, batting 444 during the streak, with seven runs scored, five RBIs, and eight stolen bases. Rookie Joe Hesketh won his first Major League game in his first start, shutting out San Diego through seven of the third innings and striking out six, resulting in Montreal rising above 500 for the first time in more than a month. Now, let's open the notebook for this week in baseball's TWIB notes from around the National League. Philadelphia's trade for Al Oliver paid off in his first game when he lined a two-run double for his new team that helped beat his old team, because the Phillies were in San Francisco when the trade was made, so Oliver just changed uniforms before he changed cities. Now it's time for this week's Volkswagen quiz, brought to you by the 1984 model. It's not a car, it's a Volkswagen. Atlanta's Dale Murphy was a double dealing man and a win over St. Louis, going five for five with three doubles. That put Murphy among the National League leaders with 24 two-baggers and gave him a career total of 145. Now for this week's quiz, can you name the player who holds the major league record for career doubles? Stay tuned for a man whose numbers speak for themselves. Sox tried to foul up Minnesota, but things rolled right for the Twins. Frank Viola kept up his winning ways, improving his record to 14 and 10 with his 10th victory in his last 13 decisions. Bobby Castillo came back from injury for his first start of the season, and he came back strong. Just one hit allowed over six innings for a victory. 
Rick Lysander locked up only his second save of the season in game one of a doubleheader, but then returned to notch another in the nightcap. The Twins called all the right signals on defense, turning nine double plays in the five-game series. Minnesota moved into full swing with 54 base hits in the series. Mickey Hatcher hit in every game, batting 524 against Boston with six RBIs, including a game winner. Gary Gaetti also hit in all five games to extend his hitting streak to 16. You know, not many folks would have predicted that in late August, Minnesota would be tightening its grip on first place in the Western Division. But that's the case. And the Twins are popping with power. Baltimore stood tall in the East with four straight wins. And the best news was a three-game sweep of the slumping California Angels, whose bats were sawed off by pitchers like Mike Flanagan, back in the win column for a 10-11 mark after stopping a personal five-game losing streak. Mike Boddicker tossed a four-hitter for his second straight shutout. Win number five in a row for Boddicker, who increased his record to 15-8. Also flying high were Baltimore bats. Eddie Murray unloaded on California with 5 for 10 hitting, and he's having yet another outstanding year. Among the league leaders with 22 homers, 89 RBIs, and a batting average above 310. Gary Renicky was right on, hitting 375 against the Angels with two homers and six RBIs. Rick Dempsey broke out of a slump with a binge. Four for 11 in the series with four RBIs on three home runs. Two of them were game winners. You always have in the back of your mind that uh, since you haven't been playing well, that if you don't bear down, things are going to turn around on you again. And we swung the bats like the Orioles can swing the bat, and I just hope we can finish out the season uh, the same way that we can. We've all got our minds set on uh, catching the two teams in front of us right now. No simple task, but remember, the Orioles are usually strongest in September. In Cleveland, a sudden turn in fortune for Indian fans, who savored an eight-game win streak. Andre Thornton gave the Tribe a last-at-bat victory for the second straight day against Toronto with a two-run double that capped a four-run ninth inning. It was game winner number 11 for Thornton. Milwaukee then came to town for three games and saw more of the same. Burt Blylevin boosted his record to 13 and five with a little help from his friends. His next start produced win number 14. Ernie Camacho came on to collect the save and later added his 17th as Cleveland continued on its victorious march. The Indians drew a dramatic design for victory in the next game when Mel Hall batted in the bottom of the ninth with the score tied and a man on first. There it is. It's going, going, and it is gone. And the Indians continue to play above the 500 level since the All-Star break. Now, let's review this week in baseball's twib notes from around the American League. Oakland's Carney Lansford was finally stopped after a 24-game hitting streak, which tied the Mets' Hubie Brooks for the majors' longest this year. The 1981 league batting champ of Boston hit almost 350 during the streak, to raise his average 20 points. New York Yankee rookie Joe Cowley had the right stuff against California, 
striking out 13 Angels in a complete game win for a record of 5-1. and one. But a Boston rookie was even righter. Roger Clemens punched out 15 against Kansas City, most by Red Soxers since Bill Mondoquette 17 against Washington in 1961. Now, let's strike up the answer to this week's Volkswagen quiz. Chris Speaker holds the Major League record for career doubles with 793, all in the American League, most with Boston and Cleveland. Stan the Man Musial holds the National League record and ranks second all-time with 725 doubles in 22 seasons for the St. Louis Cardinals. Both Speaker and Musial are in Baseball's Hall of Fame. But it's hard to toe the line and stay in step. So let's step out on some Major League missteps. Want to get back on track? Well, you got to catch the beat, get out of your seat, and put your best foot forward. High step it. But big leaguers like the rest of us sometimes seem to have two left feet. man take a load off your feet might help you bounce back next time and now some tricks of the trade ball handling big leaguers with an innate trait to coordinate up first new york met keith hernandez atlanta brave glenn hubbard baltimore's cal ripkin Los Angeles Dodger, Greg Brock. The Braves again with Jerry Royster. St. Louis Cardinal, Willie McGee. New York Yankee, Dave Winfield. Mark Brohard, Milwaukee Brewers. Ouch. Dwayne Murphy, Oakland A's. Detroit Tiger, Chet Lemon. Carney Lansford, another A. Ben Ogilvy, a Brewer Pursuer. Seattle's Phil Bradley. Herman Rivera, Los Angeles and San Francisco's Manny Trio to Bob Brenly, out and over. When Los Angeles hosted the Olympics, Dodger Stadium hosted baseball as a demonstration sport in the summer games. Teams from eight nations participated, but the action was televised around the world. And for the millions of people who weren't familiar with baseball, broadcasters like Dave Sitton were at the mic to explain it. What we did is really read down. Most people try to prepare for a, doing a sporting event by reading as much information as they could. Now, having done a number of American baseball broadcasts, I didn't want to take for granted that anybody south of the equator would understand exactly yeah. what I was talking about. Sitton brought the game to non-baseball countries like Pakistan and New Zealand by laying it out straight and simple. The next pitch is fouled off to the left side. Unlike cricket, when you have two running stations, in baseball you have, of course, three bases, and the object to get around the bases and back home. So after a batter puts the ball in play with a hit ball fair, it becomes more or less a track meet. It's spreading like wildfire, so I think in all, it won't be all too long before the whole world will be watching baseball matches. Japan beat the U.S. for the gold medal, although the U.S. won the exhibition series. And now it's time for an Old Spice salute. 
Brought to you by 24 hour strong Old Spice deodorant and antiperspirant. This week, Old Spice salutes Kirk Gibson of Detroit, whose 20th home run against Seattle was one of Gibson's 16 game winning hits, a Tiger record. He's also stolen 24 bases, the first big leaguer this year to reach the 20 home run, 20 steal plateau. You just put me in there, let me get in the everyday grind, and uh, I recognize pitches a lot better. I do, I feel a lot better, and even though you're tired physically, as long as you're mentally strong, and uh, you know you can still keep your game together. He also got two of Detroit's 20 hits against Oakland, the Tiger 20-year game high. Congratulations, Kirk.